Welcome to Wonder Women of Wine. I'm Maria Savic and this is Serbia, where people have been cultivating grapes and making wine since before the history books began. It's my heartfelt, or should I say, wine-felt wish to share with you an exciting journey through the rolling vineyards, green, flattering forests, and the magical city of Belgrade, where two rivers, the Danube and the Sava meet. We will be rendezvousing with some of our lady winemakers creating wonderful wine here today. Soon we will meet Biljana, also known locally as Wine Whisperer, and Maya, who is a super mom and a super woman too. And finally we will say hi to Georgia, the lady James Bond of the wine world. On the way, we have a true story to tell you of historical importance. The Honorable Saint Tsaritsa, Queen Milica of Serbia, who is the Wonder Woman of the medieval times. We will hear about Serbian history of wine before we join our winemakers and invited guests at Fine Wine Boutique as they discuss who the modern Serbian woman of today is over a buffet of food paired with wine from our very own lady winemakers. Later, we will meet a talented fine artist who paints portraits, landscapes and animals using red wine. And as we are in Serbia, we always have a little time to enjoy rousing folk music. All in all, a journey that we hope will warm your heart. Živeli! Serbia has a long history of grape and wine production which spans back over two millennia. The first reported existence of Vitis vinifera in Serbia dates back to the Neolithic period in the form of a grapevine growing wild. In the Danube River Valley, fossils have been discovered of early viticulture from around 400 to 200 BC. The ancient Roman historians Dio Cassius, 40 to 110 AD, and Strabo, 63-64 BC to circa AD 24, both gave descriptions of the wild grapevine of the indigenous tribes of Pannonia. Wine was produced in small quantities and of poor quality. The tribe's people mainly drank beer and mead. However, evidence shows that prior to the Roman arrival, the locals traded with Greeks and wine was imported mainly from the island of Thassos. During the Roman period that follows, Serbians found their true love for the grapevine and wine production was inspired and developed by the great Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius Probus, circa 232 to 282 AD. He reigned from Serminium, which is now the present-day city of Sremska Metrovica. Serminium was proclaimed as one of the four capitals of the Roman Empire in 294 AD during the period of the Tetrarchy. Probus was one of the 18 Roman emperors born in Serbia outside of Italy. Probus planted the first grapevines on the slopes of Fruška Gora mountain, and the cultivation of the grapevine spread to the neighboring regions of Serbia. Emperor Probus was the wine rebel of his time. Historic records show that he overturned the ban imposed by Emperor Domitian on growing grapevines outside of the Apennines. He instructed his soldiers to perform tasks to help the local people, and so in their spare time, in between wars, the soldiers were ordered to work the land by way of digging canals, construction of roads and bridges, and most importantly, planting vineyards with selected varieties of vines. It has been suggested that the grape variety Gouet Blanc was planted by Probus in Serbia. The soldiers were an unhappy bunch. No fun times for them. They worked all day planting vines under the scorching sun on the slopes of Mount Frushka Gora. These were turbulent times, and due to his strict work ethic, the historic records show that Emperor Probus was murdered by his soldiers. After the fall of the Roman Empire and the arrival of Christianity, in the sixth century, the Slavs learned about and began the cultivation of vines. The church established and produced wines originally for sacramental use. However, it wasn't long before every social class was partaking in winemaking and consumption. Soon, the production and sale of wine became regulated by law. 
The Serbian rulers took great interest in vineyards and wine and were responsible for today's defined wine regions. Stefan Namanić, the first crowned, 1198 to 1228, decreed that diluting wine with water was strictly forbidden. In the 14th century, Emperor Dušan, 1331 to 1355, wrote the first laws stating that wines were to be protected by their geographical indication and origin and were to maintain high standards of production quality. It is believed he was the only ruler of his time to build a wine cellar at his court in Prizren. A 25-kilometer-long clay wine pipeline was created to transport wine by gravity flow from his vineyards to his private cellar at his castle in Prizren, then the capital of Serbia. Along the pipeline, local villagers were allowed to pump out and drink the wine. During the Middle Ages, Serbia flourished politically, economically, and culturally, becoming one of the most respected advanced nations of Europe. Queen Milica Hrebelanović Nemanić was born around 1335 and died on November 11, 1405. Also known as Empress Milica, she reigned in Serbia from 1389 to 1393. A noble-hearted soul, Queen Milica was a beautiful woman. In 1389, she is pacing the floor, anxiously awaiting to hear from her husband, Prince Lazar, who is away fighting in the battle at Kosovo with her brothers to save their nation from the invading Ottoman Empire. Dear God Almighty, please keep him safe. Bring him home unharmed, please. Please, God. His body is my temple. His heart is my prayer. His kiss is my salvation. country is my holy ground. <laughs> this garden is my temple. This soil is my church. Dear Mother of God, Queen of Heaven, please take care of my dearest daughter, Olivera, and hold her close to your heart in God's name. <laughs> She made a sacrificial deal with the Turkish Muslim victor, Sultan Bayazid I, by accepting a vassal relationship, which resulted in sending her daughter, Princess Oliveira, to marry him. And he, in turn, allowed the Serbians to practice their Christian religion. We lost the war and so much more, my beloved. I'm lost without you. And now our daughter must go and be married to the victor's son. These are the true spoils of war. It's not what we lose, but who? But today I'm brave. My daughter must hold on to what is good. I shall give her this cross. With her, she takes my heart, for what is left of it goes with her to the Sultan's palace. Too far away. But she is my daughter and a child of Serbia. No one can take that away from us.
with the losses of her husband and brothers in battle, and her daughter in marriage to the victor, Queen Militsa paid a heavy price, as much as all the losses of her people. She held her head high with dignity and grace, and never married again. beauty, and bravery in a time when defeated Serbia had lost everything. She helped her people to recover and survive and is forever dear to the hearts of many Serbians. Boža koji si pre svih vekova i kojeg u trojici pevaju sa strahom bestelesne sile i koji od jedinorodnog sina tvojega čovečenjem nerazdvojena, gospoda našeg Isusa Hrista, od prečiste i presvete, deve bogorodice primaš i od nas grešnih slavoslovlje i duhovne službe. Vladiko, ne istraživa premudrost i očava, smiluj se mojim gresima. I osnaži če da moja, u blagu veri i sreći, da u blago čašću posluže tebi Bogu svojemu. Gospodin i roditelj njihov, sve to počeši knez. Da budemo ja i oni drugi ktitori ove svete obitelji. Da kad ponovo dođeš sa svetim svojim anđelima, postaviš mene da ti budem sa desne strane. Sudio pravedni sa izabranima tvojim koji su ti od veka ugodili. When the Ottoman Turks conquered the region, they prohibited the production of wine due to the fact that it was against their Islamic faith a special horseman brigade called the Akinsi was dispatched to set fire to vineyards and destroy them while plundering the riches of the land and people. Despite this attempt to wipe out wine production, some brave individuals continued to produce wine in secret. Furthermore, some grapes were allowed to be grown for meals, and a few new varieties from the East were introduced that were good for processing and drying, known today as sultanas. In the second half of the 14th century, Prince Lazar and Queen Milica's city of Kruševitz became the center of Serbian viticulture. During this period, planting table varieties was encouraged. Due to their combination of properties, Serbian native varieties such as Prakuputs, Smedarevka, Plovdina, and Tamjanica were saved from extinction. After 1389, Many Serbian people with some aristocracy moved farther north to the Srem area into what was at the time part of the Habsburg Empire in order to escape from the Turks. Soon after, they established their monasteries, built farms, and vineyards. They also brought with them a wealth of experience in wine culture, and winemaking flourished here. Black grape varieties were introduced and soon began to dominate. The Habsburgs brought new varieties of grapes and together they revived the wine industry. Serbian wine from Fruškogoro was served at the Viennese courts. During the 20th century, after Serbian liberation from the Turks, the intensive development of viticulture began and soon became their most important economic branch. This free development of viticulture in Serbia was under the patronage of its rulers who helped encourage new vineyards and promoted land ownership. As Phylloxera was busy devastating the vineyards of France, 1890 to 1895, 
Serbia flourished as a producer and exporter of wine. The Second World War was not kind to the Serbian vineyards. In the aftermath, the reconstruction of the country, not the vineyards, was a priority. During this period, wine production took place in large wineries established by the government of Yugoslavia. For the individual producers and monasteries, this meant nationalization and the confiscation of land. While some small producers endured, many were unable to survive. In 1970, the government prohibited tenants from producing wine and only permitted the selling of grapes to large industrial wineries. Some wine producers sold grapes and wine illegally to neighbors and relatives. Yugoslavia at that time allowed a policy of quantity, not quality, making them the fifth exporter of bulk wines in the world. In the 1980s and 1990s, viticulture was on the brink of extinction. Suffering from the rise of industrialization, the loss of the workforce to the cities, the neglect of the vineyards, and the replacement of the vines with more lucrative crops. The rebirth of wine production began with the change of the Serbian government at the beginning of the 21st century and the privatization of the wineries. Since 2003, the Serbian Sommeliers Association has educated a new breed of wine professionals successfully. Wine tourism has developed alongside this new renaissance of winemaking with established regional wine festivals over 50 years old. Serbian wine regions are located in the same geographic latitude as the major French winemaking areas. Serbia has many indigenous grape varieties, such as Prakuputs, Tamjanica, Smederevka, and Sedusha, including international varieties. Tourism has significantly increased. It's becoming a trendy destination, attracting attention from journalists writing for well-known publications like Vogue and The New York Times. In 2018, the prestigious Decanter World Wine Awards recognized Serbian wines from 63 entries. Awards were won in the gold, silver, bronze, and commended sections. This is the beginning of the new golden age of Serbian wine. Popovic is an accomplished winemaker, food technologist, and an international sommelier. And she is currently enrolled in a PhD program in wine. She has been producing wine for nine years now in their beautiful on-site restaurant, which features homegrown and organic produce on their menu. They cater for wine tourism groups and offer wine tasting events. What drew you to the study of wine? Vino is živa stvar. Unique. Yes. <laughs> Vino is živo. Vi svaki dan. Ja kad odem u vinariju i kad uzmem čašu i to mi je na, neki najlepši osjećaj kada napravim svoje vino e, i kada tih nekih par minuta u, u vinariji imam sama sa vinom i sa čašom u ruci. Ja pomislim, bože, ovo nije bilo juče lako. U tome je smisao. Da nije isto u odnosu na pre par dana ili pre par meseci da ono živi i da se ono menja. Ali možda je još i značajnije sačuvati ga u tom obliku kako ste ga napravili, u stvari od, da sačuvate ono što ste želeli. What risks do you take to make your wine? Uh, vidite, vi uh, dobijete grožđe koje negujete, koje uberete iz sopstvenog vinograda, koje gajite, uberete ga, donesete ga kući, uzmete ga u ruke i zamišljate kako će vino od njega postati. Da li ćete vi dobiti te arome koje ste vi hteli da dobijete? Da li će prosto ono živeti onaj život koji ste vi želeli da mu date? I uz Božju pomoć dobijete ono što ste želeli, tu je sva suština mog prosto izbora. What 
were the two last memorable wines, beside your own, that you tasted? Ne bi zanemarila jedan dobar šabli iz Burgundije, tu vidim u lozu koja je na kamenu maltene rasla, koja ima tako specifičan mineralni ukus. Jako velike simpatije imam prema ranjskim rizlinzima i naravno Sauvignon Blanc. If you had one day free of everything, what would you do? Livala. I negde bi me na obali čekala čaša belog, hladnog sovinjona. I will come to drink that wine with you, if that's okay. So why after 1001 tears? Why that name? Divno pitanje, toliko mi je suza trebalo da bi napravilo ovakvu vinu. Priča ide ovako. Kad pravim suvinjon, ja želim da on bude bukvalno ovakav. Da imate mineralne note, da imate kamen, kremen, miris na zovu. Ja imam mačora po imenu Gricko. I kad ja uđem u vinariju i kada u fermentaciji osetim i kad dobijem mlado vino i mu mirišem, a vino mi miriša na Gricka, Ja znam da će taj sovinjen biti fenomenalan. Cheers to Gricko. Eto što je. Maja, we hear that you are a master of another Serbian specialty. We heard that that is your secret weapon after wine. Da, dobro ste čuli. Pa mi pored vinarije imamo i destilariju. Znači, prabavimo se proizvodnjom rakije. Težimo tome da što više i vina i rakije dobijemo od sobstvenog voća, odnosno grožđa. So, is Milica your favorite rakija? Yes, da, yes, yes. Mnogi koji dođu kod nas u posetu na degustaciju u vinariju pitaju zašto to ime. A zašto moja Milica? Svaki čovek ima neku svoju milicu. A i milica je sremica. A mi smo u sremu. Elem, rakija je jako zanimljiva i specifična, pošto je naš proizvod. Godinu dana u tu jaku lozu je potrpan nar, šipak, glog i suva smok. Šta to znači? Znači da kad vi to voće izvadite iz rakije, ono je belo. Sva boja i sve što je lakovito, a zna se da je upravo to. Nar i šipak su puni vitamina C. Glog je jako dobar za srčani mišić. A posle se termički ne obrađuje. U tome je poenta. Tako da sve što je lakovito ostane u raki. Ta njena ljubičasta nijansa koju ona ima je potpuno prirodna. Thanks for telling us about what goes into creating a great bottle of wine. But we can see that the main ingredient is your heart. And it is your true passion. Maya, thank you so much for this lovely day. We really enjoyed. <laughs>
Dvorište is in Pančevo, which is 15 minutes from Belgrade. When you are going to the Vršački vineyard, this is the great place to stop by and to enjoy in lovely North Serbia cuisine. Enjoy! record about wine producing from Vršac dates back to 1494 and now in 2018 we will meet the expert behind the Soul Wine Winery, Biljana Paunov. Biljana works with the Soul Wine Winery as the enologist and their wines are truly soul inspired. When did you try your first glass of wine? What was it like? It was perfect, if I can say that now. But it was just a miracle that it was on the faculty. Someone would think that it would be maybe a middle school through the exit. No, absolutely on the faculty. For the time of the job, when we needed to do some analysis, the professor gave me a bottle of wine and said, let's go. I was just a miracle. Why not? And the magic happened. Magia was really happened, yes. And what does inspire you to want to create wine? Is it some situation or maybe a thought or maybe a view or something like that? Mnogo toga. Situacija jeste. Puno puta su mi rekli ne možeš ti to da uradiš. Na fakultetu kad sam bila, rekao su mi ne, to rade muškarci, ti si žena, to nećeš moći da uradiš. Ja sam rekao ne, upravo hoću time da se bavim. To je moja ljubav, mesto gde se sada nalazimo, vinograd, pogled. Osjećaj kada šetati između dva čokota, kada gledati groz vinove loze. Your star wine is Chardonnay. Clearly it is your baby. But what makes it so special for you? U tom Chardonnayu je otkano puno ljubavi, puno emocija. Sve moje znanje, svaki moj trenutak, bilo dobar, bilo loš. Sva uzvraćena, sva neuzvraćena ljubav. Sve ono što sam mogla da pokažem, što nisam mogla da pokažem na mestima gde sam bila ranije. Sve ono što se dešavalo na fakultetu je upravo u toj boci Chardonnaya. Kada je neko otvori, bilo dobra, bila loša emocija, pokazuje se u svom najboljem svetu. 
bukvalno moja duša, jel? I sama vinarija nam se zove Soul Wine, vino duše. To sam ja. Znači, kada nekom hoću da se prikažem u najboljem svetlu, kada neko hoće da otkrije svoju emociju, zašto nešto radim, zašto nešto pokazujem, zašto nešto skrivam, ne moram reći, ma mogu da kažem, e, probajte ovo. I ta boca će mu reći sve. And if you could, let's say, produce any variety of wine right now, what would it be? To je posebna priča i to je onako posebna emocija i ljubav koja se javila. To su penušavci. To je nešto što se onako rađa iz dana u dan u meni. Ideja, moment, trenutak, sve je tu. Samo je potrebno vreme. Have you had any idea for your own wine? Like for the name for your own wine? Puno puta sam razmišljala o tome. Bilo da smo na nekom sajmu, na nekim manifestacijama. Ljudi me često pitaju, a zašto ste dali naziv ovakav, zašto onakav? Ne mešam se puno, nekako sve to krijem za sebe, čuvam taj poseban trenutak. Čuvam tu posebnu berbu. Kada kažem, ovo je posebna berba, ja ovo ću da napravim ja, ja ovo ću da se zove ovako. I to bi bilo samo prvo slovo mog imena i tačka. Kraj. Nema više. B i tačka. You have a nickname around... This town. And there is a wine whisperer. Can you tell me something about that? How did you get that name? Postoji interesantna priča. Moja koleginica, jako dobra, koja je također nolog u Orahovici. Često smo se šalili, a u svakoj šali ima istine, da pričamo sa tankovima, pričamo sa vinom. Beautiful. Ono nam kaže svaki njegov problem, svaki njegov nedostatak. Mi njemu poverimo neke svoje tajne koje su nam tog trenutka ne možemo nikom drugom reći. It's a connection between... Kada bukvalno smo povezani, kada otvorimo poklopac i trebamo da dodamo neko enološko sredstvo, obraćamo se dušo, ljubavi, sreća moja, jel sve okej? Nekom to možda zvuči čudno i smešno, ali je važno da ljudi osete to što je u boci. Znači da osete svaki taj, tu bobicu groz, da osete predo gde se nalazimo, kišu, sunce. To je ta emocija. Svako od nas može napraviti vino. To nije problem. Ali treba pričati sa njim. Treba razumeti. Treba osetiti njegovu snagu i njegovu emociju. Today we are at Imperator Organic Winery, where we have the pleasure of meeting Đurđa Katić, the female James Bond of the wine world. A world-class sommelier. Đurđa works as an analogist at this winery, producing some of the fine wines of this region. Growing up in your grandfather's winery must have been lots of fun. Yes, during our childhood, I was third child in my family. Wow. And we spent most of the summer when we are not on the sea coast mm -hmm. in my grandfather's vineyard. And it was in Dalmatia. It is the coastal part of Croatia, actually. Mm. Uh, we actually didn't like it when we were children <laughs> because we preferred to go to the seaside to enjoy in the Play, sea and so know. on, yes. But uh, when you start, you know, uh, spending time with the wines in the vineyard, with the grapes and in the wine cellar, it becomes like a part of your genes and your DNA. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the first infection with the wine that started in my life. That is like something special for yeah. you. And you yeah. see where it brings me now, <laughs> 30 yes. something years after. Here with the Imperator Winery, mm -hmm. we are trying to uh, go back to the nature. That, that is the inspiration. Uh, we don't think that our wines have better taste and yet you will like it more than any conventional really wines. <laughs> we are doing our best really. But the idea is to keep the natural environment as clean as much as it possible. We see it like an investment in the future for our children and the new generations. And did you choose to become a winemaker? No. Okay. The wine actually chose me. Wow. 
Wow, yeah. To deal with it. <laughs> it is kind of strange way of destiny. When I was thinking where to go, what to study mm -hmm. on my mm -hmm. college and university, I had plenty of ideas to go to petrochemia, to mm -hmm. go to pharmacy, to go this and there, tourism and so on and so on. I went to the wine fair, one of the most famous in Novi Sad where I was looking the workshop of the sommeliers, mm -hmm. of my colleagues who actually founded the Serbian Sommelier Association 15 years ago, which I'm vice president today. And in that time I was so young and when I saw their way describing the wine, explaining the wines, the varieties, how the wine was produced, the technology, the aging and everything, I was like, oh, wow, it looks so magic to me. And I said, this is that small thing actually that I missed in my life and this is what I want to do. You explore your tastes and your preferences and that you, like a person, like a wine lover, figure out what really feels good to you. The idea is to find the best pleasure for the less amount of money. I think it's going to be global approach to the winemaking to keep environment as natural as possible. The more and more winemakers and wine growers, especially in old wine countries, are deciding to go back to the roots, to the basics, to organic and natural winemaking. My idea is to isolate domestic wild yeast from our vineyards, to make a comparison uh, between the organic growing vineyards, because I have this one to, to be involved and the other one who are conventional and to see what kind of the yeast actually grows in Serbia. It can be interesting for our winemakers to have our own yeast that can be used for fermentation in the future. Then you can inspire others to do that too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will see. <laughs> so, Georgia, you are far away from the retirement age, okay? But, if you say so, <laughs> what would you like to do when you retire? The same. The same. When you do something what you really love, you, you don't have to go to work any day of your life. And that's really true. I really enjoy all of this that I'm doing. And I work every day, all day long, because it, it really makes me happy. So I was always sketching something, painting, doing this, doing that. I was known as a that talented kid at school. Of course, there's uh, many different paths for every person, every artist. But for me personally, uh, 
besides just gathering some technical knowledge, I want to also to um, achieve some theoretical practice uh, with different subjects, with art history, with um, art theory in general, philosophy. So I thought that the best knowledge I can get is on uh, academy, especially when you're a student, when your head is a bit chaotic um, and, well, you're just too young to know whatever you want. Um, so I guess I was spending time searching for myself, for my personal expression. I have a uh, wine sample and I have brushes so I dip my brushes into this wine and I create uh, stains and then from these stains I create uh, actual images. Definitely I've been trying out a lot of wines that I can get my hands on to um, so I always study the labels and uh, when it's Cabernet, Merlot, something like that the deeper the red the better. It depends how it dries because it oxidizes during drying so it tends to change color in the uh, most unpredictable ways. When I started to paint I just wanted to explore everything and I want to see what can be painted with it. Well, the TV characters came later because I just wanted to focus on portraits so if to see if people can recognize what I painted. So yeah, I guess people did recognize what I the portraits that I made, so it was a like big step for me. Wine gives a, it has a special color. It has this calming almost meditative uh, expression. So uh, it can really give another dimension to the portrait. It really can, it can even look three-dimensional. This is the most interesting part in this type of painting that, um, well, you cannot see it anywhere else uh, like in this uh, technique. Because, you know, wine is made of small particles that are alive, uh, different yeast. So what's interesting about these paintings is they are maturing on the paper just as wine matures in a bottle. So you can say that you have an aging painting that ages like every other beings. We wish to invite you now to join us at a fun cocktail party in a beautiful boutique wine shop, Fino Vino in Belgrade. some of our country's eminent and fabulous movers and shakers to discuss who is a modern woman in Serbia today. We will be sharing some tasty Serbian dishes paired with wines from our lovely lady winemakers. Are you ready? Come on! The majority of women here are normal ladies who live normal lives, whatever that would be. We have really lots of uh, great scientists. One of them is with us, Jelena. Uh, lawyers like Daria. Of course, Mrs. Anne is our guest from Ireland, but still extraordinary lady. And we uh, accept her like ours, like Belgradian. <laughs> so very interesting topic. Daria, what would you say? Maybe what would be interesting to say regarding the topic is that uh, we are four partners in the company and three of us are women, ladies, so we only have one lucky guy, if I may say so. <laughs> it is true that we do a lot of work, but we try to have uh, enough spare time for what interests us the most. In my personal case, <laughs> it would be fashion, definitely, theater and travel, travel, travel. I mean, as I'm the only person here who isn't from Serbia, um, all I can do is give my, my observations. When I came to live in Serbia, which is now a long time ago, the first time I ever came to Serbia was 1978. And I was very impressed because I came from this small country on the edge of Europe. Economically, we were not very strong at the time. I had finished the Faculty of Architecture, so I was probably, you know, uh, in a good position because I had an education. But when I came here, I was so impressed by exactly that, the level of education among women. I think the other thing was how elegant the women were. They really were, and they still are today, you know, despite everything, you know, and we've lived through sanctions, um, isolation and everything else, but still women are so elegant here and they always like to look good, no matter what happens women like to look good. So th those are some of my impressions. Women are, are strong, they have to be. Most of them are doing two and three jobs if they have a family, going out to work and they're also taking care of their family and their children. So yeah, they're, they're strong, the women here are, yes. I am PhD of electrical engineering, but application in medical science. Unfortunately, because of lots of, uh, you know, 
cancer here. Mm. Uh, I had that idea. That's why I think that that's why we have lots of ideas because of necessity. You know, we need some better diagnosis and better treatments. Mm. I did and predictions of efficiency of chemotherapy in child hospital mm. to prevent taking biopsy. So. Uh, you know, some motiv we have a great motivation for that. And Daria, since you travel a lot, we heard really beautiful stories by Anne about uh, her point of view uh, as a kind of foreigner, I would say. We oh, yeah, still see you, her as very, ours. Very, very well. <laughs> yes, you are here. But uh, how do you see a someone who travels a lot, and you're a Serbian lady, comparing okay. to ladies abroad, how do you see that? Personally, I'm, I would say for me that I'm genu genuine European. I would say that uh, Serbian women resemble Southern European women probably the most, let's say, Spanish, Italian. We always tend to look nice, you know, no matter what, even at the times of sanctions or bombing or whatever, you know. Me personally, yes, I, I always tend to look the best possible. I mean, I'm, if I may say, I'm 43. Uh, but I, yes, <laughs> thanks for that look. <laughs> it's a compliment. <laughs> maybe, me, maybe we have a, a Slavic beauty. Uh, and a, a touch of Slavic soul from uh, the Russian classical novels from Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, I would say so, yes. Okay, I would like to propose a toast um, to the women of Serbia and how I have met the most wonderful women here over the last 35 years. And thank you for this great conversation that we had this evening. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming with me to meet the Wonder Woman of Wine in Serbia. I wish you could taste the wines as I did and you would know why they are fast becoming highly sought after across the world. Maybe we will meet again, who knows? Perhaps in a Belgradian restaurant sipping some soul wine Chardonnay or a little cafe in the mountains toasting our good fortune with beautiful organic wine from Imperator. Maybe along the banks of the Danube drinking crispy Rhine Riesling from Maya of Manufactura Wines. I hope you have enjoyed this journey as much as I have and I'm sure the magical beauty of Serbia has captured your heart. Until we meet again!